Hello, and welcome to the Amara Farm Compost Pile. Um, it's a pile of dirt, as you'd expect. Uh, but to me it's fascinating because if you look closely, you can sort of see everything that's happened on the farm in the last couple months. So let's take a look. Um, there's a pile of tomatoes here. This is uh, the resurrection of Martin's arugula. This is the arugula I tore out in the greenhouse a month ago, and as you can see, it's rooted and gone to seed and probably doesn't taste very good anymore, but um, uh, it's a survivor. This is some garlic. I've been eating garlic out of the compost pile uh, whenever I find it. Um, it grows really well. And there's some bok choy. And then there's the weeds that we've been pulling out of the garden. So there's some buttercup and some grass and uh, a fern. But not all the weeds that we pull out get tossed on the compost pile. Some of them are, uh, I get, let's say, infectious. Um, horsetail. <laughs> Uh, so the horsetail and a couple other things, tomato suckers, they'll go over the fence. We don't put them in the compost pile. Arzina told me a, a cool story about uh, the apple tree behind this compost pile. Apparently, when she first moved in, it didn't used to bear fruit. And since they've had the compost pile here, now it does. So I guess that's proof. Compost is good for plants. Who'd have thought? So I've been holed up at the farm for almost six weeks now. Um, and yesterday I had a bit of excitement because I got off farm. I, I went to film Arzina at the farmer's market, and while I was there I did something utterly mundane, something I wouldn't have given a thought to two months ago. I bought a loaf of bread. And as I was buying the bread, um, I looked at the baker and I said, you're, you're lucky to have this money. I haven't spent any money in a month, but here you go. And that was true. And it kind of just gave me a glimpse of how this life that I have at the farm, it's, it's I guess, a simpler life. Um, because I'm here, I'm working, um, I'm eating off the farm, um, I'm getting room and board from uh, the farmers, and my needs are taken care of. Um, so I kind of feel like I've escaped the rat race. It feels good. I don't know if I'm going to want to go back. To finish up, I want to talk about hoes, because hoes are this sort of stereotypical gardening tool that every gardener needs, and I didn't really know what they were for before I came to the farm. I've been doing a lot of hoeing, um, so I want to show you the kinds of hoes that we're using. Um, this is a, a wheel hoe. Um, this is the hoe part. This is the wheel, obviously. We use the wheel hoe for weeding the pathways between the beds. It's too big to really weed between the plants, but because it's big, it's efficient. This, I think, is a scuffle hoe. Um, it's kind of like the wheel hoe, um, but smaller, and you can just scrape it through the soil, and it turns it over, and this is a favorite of, our, of Kate, our farm manager. Um, but my favorite hoe... <coughs> my favorite hoe is this diamond hoe. Diamond. And it's super easy to use. You just drag it through the soil. It naturally sits about an inch below the surface of the soil, cuts off all the roots, turns over the soil, and you just scuffle down the edge of a row and it gets rid of all the weeds. So those are hoes. Um, weeding tools extraordinaire. Now I know. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Um, that's a raven. Check that raven out. I've been chasing that raven with a camera for weeks now, and I haven't got, got it on, on camera. Uh, if you want to uh, follow more of my journey uh, learning uh, about stuff on the farm, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, you can find out more about the film project that I'm making, The Hands That Feed Us, at thehandsthatfeedus.ca. Um, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram, but I think I'm going to fade away from that. Facebook's not sharing my YouTube videos, so... I guess I'm going to stay more on YouTube. Um, so see you next week. There's an eagle up there. Playing in the wind.